So in today's video, we're going to be going over the capital asset pricing model and how to calculate it in Python. Uh, the capital asset pricing model, also called CAPM, is pretty useful in finance. Uh, it's a good starting point for analysis. Um, what we're doing is calculating the cost of equity of a company using uh, the beta, the market returns, and the risk-free rate. Uh, essentially what it does is calculates the risk associated with a certain investment uh, compared to the market, and then estimates estimates how much return you should require for that level of risk. Um, this is important because it shows that sometimes um, expected returns are not worth the risk. And when making up a portfolio, uh, it's important to balance risk and reward to make sure that your downside risk doesn't exceed your risk tolerance. I'll be kind of continuing out the whole process in later videos, but uh, let's get started on the CAPM. So first, we're just going to need to import our stats functions. So we're just going to import this. I'm just going to import all. Uh, I created some functions for it all, so uh, I'll be going through them. Um, first one, calculate beta. I'm sure we're familiar with that by now if you've watched the past couple of videos. Uh, today we're, we're going to be using uh, LAM Research. Uh, they're a semiconductor researcher that has deals with a lot of big semiconductor companies. Uh, they're kind of the first line in the chain. So when big semiconductor companies do well, they also benefit. Uh, I'm just doing a little research on them right now. Um, first, just going to calculate our beta. Done that before. You're just regressing the market returns on the uh, stock returns. And we didn't import it. So beta is important because it tells us our expected risk and reward compared to the market. And higher indicates higher risk, higher return. Um, next, we're going to be doing our risk-free rate. So for our risk-free rate, um, I give a couple options uh, depending on your investment horizon and investment goals. Um, typical three month is a good proxy for risk-free rate because treasuries are not technically risk-free, but they're about as close as you can get. So what we're gonna be using for this is FRED. So Fred is, if you're not familiar, one of the big economic data suppliers. Um, they're from the St. Louis Fed. Um, so it's, it's pretty reliable data, I would say. Uh, what we're going to be using is the market yield on the U.S. Treasury securities uh, on the investment basis, which is a good proxy for the risk-free rate because you can just put money into um, these bonds and achieve this yield. And to get this data, uh, we're going to be using Pandas Data Reader. Uh, so Pandas, if you're not familiar, they have uh, a package called Data Reader. So it just goes to the Fed and you just put in the series ID, start and end, and it gives you the data. So we're just going to be using today and then minus 10 days to just account for a day that is um, the most recent day. And then we're just going to get the most recent uh, rate. And we're just doing 10 days just in case it's like a weekend or a long weekend or holiday just to cover all the bases. So now we're going to take that and divide it by 100 to get the percentage. So as you can see, We get our risk-free rate right here. Um, next, we're going to do our market return. This is a, a little more complicated. So for this, what we're doing is we're taking 
our index. Uh, you could specify the index to better suit um, your stock. So for example, I'm using uh, Lamb Research. They're a pretty big company, so I'm just using the S&P 500 as a general index. Uh, if you were using like a mid cap or a small cap, um, you could do like the Russell 2000 to get a closer kind of market to the stock that you're interested in. Um, so what this function does is it, let me just put this in here. So it takes the, the uh, index you're interested in and gets today's and then the start date and then it downloads it. Um, it creates a column for a year and then creates an empty list for annual returns. So then it goes through all the years and gets the return for the year and then adds that. And then we use the geometric mean uh, because the geometric mean accounts for compounding compared to the arith arithmetic mean. Yikes, I can't talk today. Um, and then it returns uh, a float of the geometric mean. And so if we were to do this, you can see that the 10-year geometric average of the S&P 500 is 9.75%. And so now that we have all of our calculations, um, we can calculate our cap M. So for this, um, all we need is to put in the stock, the index, the beta period, the beta, and the beta interval, market period, and treasury type. And it calculates the beta, calculates the risk-free rate, calculates the market rate, and then the equity risk premium. This is just the market rate minus the risk-free rate. So it's the expected return of the market. So the risk you're taking by investing in the market is this equity risk premium as compared to investing in the risk-free rate, which should be about 4%. Uh, 4%, almost exactly. Um, so then cap M is just the risk-free rate plus the beta times the equity risk premium. This error is just because um, our beta calculation can return either beta or beta and the model. Uh, in our function, we have just beta always is true. So you won't ever return the model. So this is just showing up as an error. Um, I also included these get Russell 1000 tickers and get S&P 500 tickers functions, just in case you wanted to create some for loops to kind of profile the whole uh, S&P 500 or Russell 1000 to maybe do some some sorting or some um, stock selection. Um, so if we run this, we can see that our required return for LAM research is 13.24%. Um, one important thing to note when it comes to CAPM, it's a very basic model. So this is just a simple model um, it's good for getting the expected cost of equity. Um, there are a lot more complex models that you can look into if you were more interested in getting a more accurate cost of equity. Uh, for example, like taking in macroeconomic factors or taking in company specific factors or even market specific factors or uh, index specific factors. Uh, there's limitless potential to expand upon this model. And it's important to recognize that this is a very, very simple model with a lot of assumptions. And I wouldn't really use it as a basis for investment. I would just use it as a starting point, something to kind of screen stocks off of or just do initial analysis before uh, doing full due diligence. Um, if you're interested in more complex models, I'll be going into that. 
a little more and kind of exploring some other options when it comes to uh, the capital asset pricing model. Um, oh, one last thing is it assumes a linear, linear relationship between expected return and risk, which may ov oversimplify the, that relationship because um, financial markets are often more complex than uh, just linear relationships. So be aware of that. And it also assumes that beta is stable over time, which, uh, as we saw from the last couple, may not hold true. Um, even just testing within the confidence interval of the beta that we calculated last time is important, just so you get the full range of um, volatility with beta. And... It's important to look at the direction of the trend when it comes to the risk-free rate. Um, if we expect the risk-free rate to be dropping soon or to be rising soon even uh, in the future, we need to adjust our model um, effectively. For example, in a year, if the risk-free rate is 3% lower, then our required return is going to be lower because we can't expect to get uh, as much return from risk-free investments. So that needs to be taken into account. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much covering all the bases of at least an intro to the CAPM. So if you have any more questions or any suggestions for future videos, uh, please feel free to drop them in the comments. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, I appreciate it. Thanks.